Now that you've learned about the meaning of the mean value theorem, I'll explain why the mean value theorem works. The Eisenhower Tunnel, west of Denver, Colorado, allows traffic from Interstate 70 to pass under the Continental Divide in the Rocky Mountains. The tunnel is roughly 1.7 miles long, and the posted speed limit is 50 miles per hour. Suppose there is a car approaching the tunnel. As it enters the tunnel, the car is traveling at 49 miles per hour. After about 1.9 minutes, or 0.0318 hours, the car emerges, at which time it is traveling 48 miles per hour. Now, if we let f of x be the car's distance from the tunnel entrance x hours after it enters the tunnel, then we can think about the scenario in terms of the mean value theorem. The mean value theorem says, if a function f is defined on the closed interval from a to b, and if f is continuous over the entire interval and f is differentiable over the interval, then there is a real number c in the interval where f prime of c is equal to the difference quotient evaluated from a to b. In this scenario, the time interval is from 0 to 0 0.0318 hours, f of a is equal to 0 miles, and f of b is equal to 1.7 miles, and this difference quotient is approximately equal to 53.5 miles per hour. And the car has some distance value for each moment in time. Since the car can't teleport from one position to another, then the distance increases continuously. And since the car can't instantaneously change its speed, f is differentiable. So, we have met the conditions for the mean value theorem to be true in this scenario. And this means that there is some time value, c, where the instantaneous speed of the car at time c is equal to 53.5 miles per hour. So the mean value theorem is telling us that, despite traveling below the speed limit at the entrance and exit to the tunnel, we know that the car must have been traveling exactly 53.5 miles per hour sometime in the tunnel. This leads us to ask the question, why does this value of c exist? Here is the statement of the mean value theorem, and let's think about this in terms of a graph. The horizontal axis will be the elapsed time since the car entered the tunnel, measured in hours, and the vertical axis will be the car's distance from the entrance, measured in miles. We know that if zero hours have elapsed, the car's distance from the entrance is zero miles, since the car is at the entrance. So, we'll add a point at zero, zero to represent this. Then, the car exits the tunnel after 0 0.0318 hours have elapsed, and it has traveled 1.7 miles. Let's first think about whether it would be possible for the car to be traveling the speed limit, that is, a constant speed of 50 miles per hour, the entire time it is in the tunnel. In this case, a graph of the car's distance versus elapsed time would look like this. We can see on the graph that when 0.0318 hours have elapsed, the car's distance from the tunnel entrance is 1.59 miles. That is, if the car's instantaneous speed was always 50 miles per hour, then it would only travel a distance of 1.59 miles, so it couldn't have reached the end of the tunnel in the elapsed time. So, now we know that a graph of the car's distance versus elapsed time needs to start here and end here, and that it can't have a constant slope. What else might the graph look like? Here is one potential graph that shows the car traveling the 1.7 miles in 0.0318 hours. We can use a green line segment to represent another car that travels at a constant rate and covers the same distance in the same amount of time. The green car's constant speed is 53.5 miles per hour, and this is the same as the blue car's average speed. Now, let's compare the speed of the blue car with that of the green car. The blue car's speed at a given moment in time can be represented by the slope of a line tangent to the blue curve at that time. Let's start with a tangent line at x0 hours. The slope of this tangent line is f prime of x0. Let's let the value of x0 increase. As we do this, let's watch the slope of the tangent line. You probably noticed that, at first, the slope of the purple tangent line was less than the slope of the green secant line, 
So that would mean initially the blue car was traveling slower than 53.5 miles per hour. Then, in order to travel the entire 1.7 miles in the given 0.0138 hours, at the end of the time of the tunnel, the blue car was traveling faster than 53.5 miles per hour. And, sometime during the blue car's trip through the tunnel, there was some moment in time where the slope of the tangent line was equal to the slope of the secant line. This is the value of c, where the slope of the tangent line, f prime of c, is equal to the difference quotient. And this is the basic reason why c must exist. If f prime of x is less than 53.5 miles per hour near the start of the elapsed time, and if f prime of x is greater than 53.5 near the end, then f prime of x must be equal to 53.5 sometime in the middle. We don't know exactly when that will happen, but we know that it will happen sometime. And what if the graph looked a little different? This graph shows another potential distance versus time graph for the car. The car is traveling faster than the average speed at the start of the elapsed time, and it is traveling slower than the average speed at the end. So, if we think about the slope of the purple tangent line, which shows the car's instantaneous speed, as we watch the time increase, then there must be some moment in time where the instantaneous speed is equal to the average speed. Now, do these inequalities have to happen right near the start and the end? Let's go back to our first graph. And we'll pull the ending point of the blue graph back a little bit. Let's extend this blue graph to the end of the time in the tunnel. And we can add a purple tangent line to show the car's instantaneous speed at the beginning of its trip through the tunnel. So in this situation, we see that the car's speed is less than 53.5 miles per hour near the start. However, if we look at a line tangent to the graph at the end of the elapsed time, then the slope of this line is also less than the slope of the green secant line. However, if we look at a tangent line near the halfway mark, we can see that the slope of this tangent line is greater than the slope of the green secant line. So, the car's speed is greater than 53.5 miles per hour at some time during its trip. And if we increase the value of x0, then we see that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change sometime in between those two times. So, for the mean value theorem to be true, we don't need these inequalities to be true right near the endpoints of the interval, we just need them to be true sometime in the interval. Now, to summarize what we've seen. The mean value theorem says that there was some moment in time where the car's instantaneous speed was equal to its average speed. How do we know that such a moment in time exists? The main reasoning was that if the instantaneous speed was less than the average speed at some time in the interval, and was greater than the average speed at some other time in the interval, then the instantaneous speed had to be equal to the average speed sometime in between those two times. And this would also have worked if our inequalities weren't strict. So this is, intuitively, why the mean value theorem is true.